Welcome to another Wargame review from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at a 2020 Wargame, and it's called From Salerno to Rome. And I know it's a Wargame because it says Wargame. Wargame on it. I thought that was cute. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, this is a game, obviously, about the Italian campaign, specifically the beach landings at Salerno, and then the race north Drive to Rome. Drive to the north, yep. Yeah, so it's... Uh, is it 1944. Uh, so 1943. It starts in 43 and ends in yep. 44, I believe. Um, and so the game's designed by... Sergio Schiavi. Yes. And this is put out by his company called Dissimula Edizioni. Italian company. Italian company. Yep. Imagine that. Yeah. Um, this is a pretty big war game, if I'm honest. Well, it, it, it's, it's a two-mapper. Yes. And the turns are very involved. Yes. Not complex. We talked about this. Yeah. Not complex, but involved. And there's potentially, as you build more and more units through reinforcements, your turns are going to continue to build yes. and take longer and longer because you have more activation points to activate more units. Yes. So it's a big war game. Yes. This one is not one you're going to play in three, four, maybe even five hours. Even the shorter scenario, we were going on four hours. Yeah. And that, so you know, it's our first play. There was yep, a lot to lots learn of in learning, this. Uh, and the rules are a translation from Italian, which always makes it tough. So you just got to bear that in mind. But the, I think the game says it's it plays in two to forty, 40 hours. hours. The forty hours would be the ten full turns, yeah, of you know three to seven impulses per turn. And probably not your first game ever. Like right. you've you've played some of the smaller scenarios, so you've got the rules down. Yeah. So you you can move through a turn decently. You'd be able to probably yeah. bash that at that time if it went the whole way. Yeah. But it, it it is a big war game. I think your your statement is absolutely correct. Yes. The production value is very very nice. Gorgeous looking maps. Really nice counters. Yeah. Those maps. I mean, th these maps deserve to be. You know, laminated, framed, put on the wall. They're very nice. It's a style that I enjoy very much. They're yep. very detailed. They look great. Well, I really enjoy the the small details of the yes. terrain. I just think that's excellent because it just adds a feel to the game. Yes. So. But the game, it has a lot of stuff. I don't know. It's, it had a lot of stuff that I had not seen before. Yeah. Is what I would say. And that doesn't mean it doesn't exist, or this is the first time it's playing, but I haven't played with some right. of the, these mechanics before. Basically, <clears throat> your forces uh, are divided up into formations. Most of the time, the, you know, the average formation is a, is a division size. Right. So you've got a bunch of divisions, and then you have a couple of um, Cores. core HQs. And you can organize those in a lot of different ways of how you want to do it. And you have these little command sheets onto which you're actually going to organize your army. And there's basically five for the yeah. for the allies. You got the Brits and the Americans. You have five slots, and you can organize all of your divisions and corps into into those five groups basically. Yeah. And the the Germans have a little bit less flexibility. They've got two armies. They have the and they only have three 14th army, the 10th army, three slots. Yeah, they only have three apiece. Mm -hmm. But uh, basically, you're going to organize your formation HQs on there. So you might have like, uh, you know, a call and anywhere from two to six divisions mm -hmm. in that same little slot. And you're most of the time, if you're activating that core, you're going to activate a good chunk of those divisions along with it. So that's how kind of how that aspect of it works. Well, and that's done during the planning phase. Yes. Which is a very cool phase. It's it's supposed to be, you know, hidden a little bit secret. You're you're trying to make your plans for the turn. I that was one of the parts I really liked. Yes. Although, what did I say? I don't know that I understand it fully. Yeah. Because I think that's going to come through repetition and playing. Even though we got through a couple of turns with multiple impulses, we didn't... I still feel like I need to understand the nuances yeah, of so that it's, better. Yeah, so it's one of those things where you can learn the mechanics of, of it. Fairly simple. Reasonably well. But employing those and, and maximizing your strategy of how you do that and when... Story. Yeah, that's, that's where you're going to invest time in this to gain the expertise yeah. in this game. And there's a lot, that's what I would say is, there's a there's a bit of a jumping off point here with learning the rules, 
but then there's like a whole ocean of strategy and more oh, yeah. that you can really get into with this one as well. So we talked about it as we were playing. We felt like we were really getting a feel for only the mechanics. Yeah. How it works, how combat works, how you can modify that, how you can use your aircraft, how you can use your, you know, as the allies, the, the, the naval fire. You know, those were the elements that we were trying to understand and figure out. Not necessarily, oh, I need to go this route, that route. I need to attack here and do this. Yeah. And then pull a surprise, you know, airborne assault. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I think three or four plays, you're going to need to really get some of that strategy down. And I, this is a game I think it's worth investing in yes. to try to understand that. Yeah. So the, the other aspect of this command structure is you have um, a, a, an amount of activation points. Mm. And those are dictated by the turn track. It has, you know, the Americans get this many, the Brits get this many, the, I think the Poles get this many, and then the uh, the Germans. Yeah. And, like, the Germans have, like, 20 activation points on the first turn. And you, basically what you're going to do is you're going to spend those on a little menu. Right here. To, this is the Allied menu. Yeah, you spend those to activate formations, mm -hmm. both divisions or corps. Then once you, so once you've done that, you're then going to go back and forth between the players, alternating him, al doing operations with your activated formations. Mm -hmm. So if I've got five activated formations, uh, and you've got like four, I'm going to do one of my formations. Then you're going to do one of your mm -hmm. formations. I'm going to do one. And you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then once we're done with that, that ends that impulse. Mm -hmm. Then we go back and do another planning phase. And then I spend whatever action points I might have left. Because it's with how few units you start with and how many action points you've got, you won't be able to spend all of your action points in your first In one activation. activation, yeah. So, you know, you might move everything and do fights, and then you go into the next impulse. Mm -hmm. You might have some reinforcements come in yeah. as well. And then you're going to spend more of your activation points that you've got, and you do another impulse, which is... Fight, 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 fight. Uh, mm. Do all of that, uh, alternating. And then if you've got any left, you do another one. Yeah. So this is where your your turns, made up of impulses, can get quite long. Well, if if you just literally... Because you can activate single units. Yeah, you can or activate, you can activate division, yeah. core, a core with three or four units. But you might... I mean, you might drag that out because you don't want to throw all your eggs in one basket and do one big move... You might want to, oh, I'm going to move these guys around and then see what Alexander does yeah. and and then vice versa. So you could turn that into four, maybe five different impulses within that turn, and that's going to vary. Yes. I may decide, oh, you know what? I've got an advantage here. I'm going to I'm going to activate this core with those four units and I'm going to go for it. Yes. So that's going to take a lot of my points and it's going to it, right and it might shorten how many how many impulses that I can do that be effective. I can do and then you may end up with extra impulses that aren't challenged yeah, by me. Which is not and, good. And that's and, and to me, that was the thing I think as we were playing it, I was like, I really like that because it it allows for overall planning. Because you really have to commit to what you're doing, yeah, about who you're activating. But then you can decide to, oh, I'm gonna do this single unit activation down here first, because I want to see what you're gonna do. And then I could maybe do my big one or I liked that because it it to me it provided some a little bit of flexibility yeah. in that rigid structure, and I thought that was cool. I thought that was very real world. Uh, you, you don't just throw your battle plans in action and they ultimately carry out the way you wanted them. Yes, there's got to be some give and take and some reaction and and counter reaction and. I thought this handled that very interestingly and very well. Yeah, it was interesting reading the rules because they're like. You know, the operations phases and the impulses, that it, it describes them as being fluid yeah. based on what the players choose. And I felt like in this game, more than any other game that I've probably played at a scale like this, um, that was very new and quite different. Yeah. Like in, in every other mm -hmm. war game, it's... You move know, you all got, your you units. Got chip pull. Boom. Yep. Move those guys with a chip. Next chip. Right. There's a structure yep. to that. Or it's move everything... Fight everything. Yep. You move everything. Fire everything. Right. Wait. That's just what it is. Yeah. I here, move all my units and fight. You move all your units and fight. That is not the way this game is set. Yeah. Up. Here they give you kind of like that turn structure, but it's like 
You, can you, you might have as many turns as yeah. and, and as many impulses as you guys want to eke out or yep. what you want to do. And then, like you said, in the later turns when you've got like 40 activation points and the map's covered in units, those those turns are going to be filled with more impulses and they're going to get much longer yeah. as well. Yeah. There's just more to do. Yeah. So just bear that in mind. As this game go, goes on, it will... I don't know. It, it just... It'll... Each turn becomes longer, so yeah, the pace I would might agree. slow down a little bit. I, I think the comment that I made, and it's a totally different game, uh, Cataclysm is a game that we've played from GMT. Mm -hmm. It's chit pull, and man, by the end of the game, that little cup of chits is like packed. Yeah, you there's keep like putting more in. Yeah, there's like 50 chits in there, and, it's, <laughs> and it turns a, a single round into a... 90 minute affair <laughs> yeah your single round took as long as three of the earlier yeah rounds. and i think that's the way this it builds yes. as you get more and more reinforcements as you move units and extend them and then you've got to worry about your supply as always in most war games but but i agree with you i think that was a very different take on it and it seemed very novel to me now yeah maybe we're less experienced maybe someone out there can say oh yeah that's like this yeah but I'm I, sure this game's like Yeah, that. I, I enjoyed that. I thought it was nice. Yeah, it was, it was something very different. Yep. And that's the only kind of <clears throat> caveat that I put on this, or the comment that I would say, is that there's there's some newness to me in some of those things and the way things worked. And some of the parts of the rule book weren't explicit or specific enough yeah. for me to not have to read it three or four times. And that's... Just due to a translation, right? Yeah, it's part. It's part of it, and it's, you know, it, some games where they have more traditional mm -hmm. mechanics is what I would say. It's easier to glean what they mean, and, right. and like, okay, da, 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 da. this one it was like that. I was trying to figure out what they were trying to do. Yeah, yeah, and it's and it was something conceptually that was different. So yeah. I had to make that conceptual leap. And then get the rules to, to kind of conform to and, those things. And I think that's a very insightful comment. I think a lot of times we as war gamers, we fall back on our experiences. Oh, this is how it normally worked. Well, in this game, yeah. I, I don't know that that, once again, because we feel like there's some new and novel, or at least less than normal, yeah, normally some, used mechanics. Yeah. And it, it opened it up some discussion. But we were like, well, I yeah. think that's what it's trying to say. And then we were like, well, no. Then we read that sentence and it seemed... There was even one point where we felt one of the sentences had meant to probably be removed. Oh, yeah. There's because a, the rule had changed. Yeah. And then we had a next sentence and we're like, okay, that one makes more sense. The other one didn't necessarily make sense. We're going to go with the second one. Yes. So I would strike that out of my rule book, I think, <laughs> is what I... Yeah. But, you know, you know a, a small publisher, I think this is their second game. Yes. Uh, you, you know, Sergio may have a crack team of eight or ten playtesters and a developer, but he's growing and learning as well. Their first game, Radetzky's March, we, we have. You know, it's a nice game as well. But they're getting there. This is a nice company. I, I And they've got some new games coming up. I saw there's an ACW game coming up. So Interesting. We're, we're diverging from yes. from this. but <laughs> Yeah, but as much as... like, So there are some games made by companies outside the US or the UK where they translate the rules and it's incomprehensible. Yeah, it's, it's garbage. Uh, this we is, played many a game like that. This is not incomprehensible. Um, yeah. You just... I did feel, but I had to put in an extra, you know, layer of effort into into yeah. making sure that we were playing it as it was intended to be played. Right, uh, because some of some of the words are used and are interchanged mm -hmm. when they shouldn't be. You should have a specific term for this thing. For, for instance, what was the one we talked about? Bombard and barrage. And barrage. They were used interchangeably. They, they were, yeah, they played pretty loose and fast with those two words. But like, it that's not what it, it, it like. That was just an example. Pretty sure, like some. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think what a, what other example we had. Well, but. there are times where it's talking about impulses and activation points, and yes, and it almost gets lost. At times, in its own rule set, yeah, where yeah. it could have, it just needed a, an extra layer of clarity. We were yeah. able to figure it out. Yep. But understand, if you want to commit to a game like this, you you just got to work a little bit harder than yeah. you would in a normal rules. Well, to me, to, like, you're to probably going to end up taking some notes in the margin of that rule book, yeah. highlighting some segments, crossing a word out and rewriting a word because maybe it 
should have been that word to make it clearer. And I think because of how rewarding the gameplay can be, it's and worth how it. interesting this is, that's worth someone's it. gonna someone's gonna put a new one on BGG. I, I would agree. I guarantee it. And, and if maybe, not, it's already on there because yeah, it came out six months Maybe ago. we need to check that out. But we yeah. haven't. But as it comes in the in the game, a little bit of work. That's yeah. All. But it's but it's not. Uh, yeah, it's a hurdle you got to get over. Yeah, but it's not like a concrete wall that you're never gonna get. Yeah. Through. Well, you know, one of the things that we talked while we were playing it, there were some, there were some really cool mechanics that weren't overdone. Yeah. Like the airborne assault attacks. Yes. You know, it had some crunch in it. You know, you have you have to you choose a target, you you put your stack there, then you roll a couple of dice. The first one is a is a direction, and yeah. then the second die roll is a number of hexes number of hexes. You drift. <laughs> so you know, and and I think every airborne game I've ever played it has something like that. But I thought it was done very well here. That it worked. I thought it worked it was very. Clean. It was clean. It worked well. It felt good. It was well written on the, yeah, uh, the, the the map itself. Yes, and we were able to whip through that pretty quickly. And I was like, oh, that was pretty effortless. Now after doing it, it's like, oh, I wouldn't have done that. There's no <laughs> way I would have done that. Yeah, strategy versus rules. Yeah, this... once again. <laughs> well, one of the interesting thing is when your units land on the enemy unit, it immediately takes a reduction. Yeah. Or if you land, what was it, hills and... Uh, mountain, sea, or, or hills. urban. Yeah, you you take a reduction. So I'm like, oh, I would have never landed there. Yeah, you're trying to find the open spaces. Yeah, you try to find the open spaces where you have a little wiggle room, and, and then your movement's going to be halved. So if you want to attack with them, you really got to take the risk and kind of get close. If not, yeah, you got to consolidate, and then on a subsequent impulse, yeah. then you got to go. Move together and attack. But I, I thought that was well done. I liked the... I think the artillery was very well done, and the it naval enough, yeah. barrages. It was fairly simple. I also really liked the rule where, as the enemy approached you and got adjacent to your stacks, you had a choice of, you know, you could use planes to bring, yeah, bringing the air force to bomb them. Whatever they called it, barrage. Or I'm trying to remember. That was air, like air, that was that was air bombardment. Air bombardment. Bomb, air bombardment. <laughs> or then you could do you, you could fire all your artillery and and do some reductions. And I really liked that. I, I thought that was a cool concept. I've seen that in other games, but I thought that was well done. Yeah, the chromy aspects were done pretty cleanly, yeah. considering. And I was. Uh, I don't know if I was surprised, but I was impressed by that. Yeah. Because I think some games get bogged down in trying to be, I don't know if they're trying to be hyper realistic or they're like, oh, these meet all these conditions, and then you can do this one yeah. really obscure thing. You're like, if you if your airborne's coming from off map, you can drop them anywhere. Yeah. In any hex on the yep. map. Right. If or, they're coming on map, you got to be near an airfield, and yeah, that was pretty clear. to an airfield. Pretty clear. And then you can drop on any hex in the map. Yeah. It's it's like. You, you just—it's just clean, and, yeah, that's, and I appreciate right. that because you want to do the fun and interesting stuff like that that gives you a lot of tactical and strategic yep. options. And I don't want to get bogged down in all this garbage. I just yeah. want to be able to do it. And, yeah. and in, in this game, I felt like the cool stuff—you can just do it. Yeah, and, and I think that's really neat. And I thought you could do it fairly simply enough that you didn't have to keep your nose in the rule book. Yes, I think that to me that was a key, particularly for a game that's this big. This many yes, units. Yes. You, I, I think if you had that minutia, man, forty hours would be a, a fart in the wind. I mean, it. You're, you're talking it's gonna be more like sixty hours. So the actual rules of this, uh, fourteen pages. Th that's not. I mean, it's not bad. This could so easily in any other game have been a fifty-page rulebook. I agree. And there's there are some aspects that I wish had been, but just yeah. were clarified. But 14 pages of rules for a game this Not big bad. is pretty impressive, considering yeah. all the things you can and can't do. Well, and I thought the charts were pretty good and yeah. helpful. Um, I, I frankly loved the operations menu. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Some of these we didn't necessarily fully explore, but there's a lot of things about extending your supply lines. There's a, a lot of things about the airborne assaults, forming a task force. I, there's just a lot of really cool stuff. I really liked that menu because that felt like I was a commander, like I had some choices. Yes. I enjoyed that. Really thought that was good. And it, and it gives you more than just move all your units and shoot yeah. all your units, yeah. which uh, so many war games have that. Here it's like, well, it, it lays up basically all the special rules in front yep. of you. You're like, well, you you know, you can do this sexual thing. You can form a counter cover. You can do a, a counterattack. 
You can you know, extend your supply lines. You can do all your airdrops and things mm -hmm. like that. But all of those special rules are here on a little menu in front of you, yeah. as well as in the rules. And I, and I that's a, a credit to having a good play. It is always yeah. You you yeah. you score a lot of points with us for that. Well, and there were times we had to go back into the rule book to make sure we were understanding exactly what was written there on that operations menu. But yeah, I, I thought overall very well done. I I'm I'm going to be honest. We're we're trying to play our last two or three games to do our 2020 list. Yes. I think this one might crack my my top ten. A, yes, and and again, it's a game that's going to reward investment in time as well. Well, and it's also I I could see someone playing this solo several times just to get the mechanics down. Yeah, and then get your buddy, with it. And, and you would have a huge advantage over over that buddy. But yeah. but to me, throw this on the throw this on the table, set it up, move the counters around, follow the, and you'll learn the system within a couple of turns. Yeah, this is a game I also I'm probably going to go on to the Board Game Geek website just to see if they have a new rule book. If they yeah, or, or just because I there will be a couple questions that you will have. Yep. Uh and to see if those have been answered and how well supported mm. the game is. I presume I would hope that it is well supported. Yep. It should be. Yeah. Um but it's I I enjoyed uh, mm -hmm. what we played of it as well and there's a lot of potential here yeah. for this to be like this is my big Italy war game. Well, and and one one of the laments I had as we were playing, you know, I'd love to play the full campaign just because I think yeah. it would be so interesting to see how it works out and how it develops and evolves over time. There's just a lot of elements I think of strategy that you just got to figure out. And we played on the bottom map, right? The southernmost map. Yes. So There's we did. A, yeah, we did the. It starts with. The Allies have landing. already landed at Salerno, yeah, yeah. so you don't roll for any landings or anything, right. but it's breaking out of the beachhead, going to take, uh, is it Foggia, and yeah. then racing up to Naples. That's kind of the first scenario, is yeah. cutting cutting Italy in half and then starting to progress upwards. And you're supposed to do that in a couple of turns of three or four impulses. I, I, I got close, but not not really. I think yeah. you were going to end up killing my airborne over here, and I was having trouble. Or they'd be out of supply right. after a couple of impulses. And I was bogged down because I made a huge mistake at the beginning and let my supply center, <laughs> yeah. which I would have never done. But but I, again, it's but like that because set up, you have a little bit of that, that freedom. Oh, set up within two hexes of these spaces. Right. right. You know, you play it once, you totally balls it up. Yeah. You go back so that next time your setup is significantly better. Yeah. That, that investment in time and learning will help make these, this game very, very good if you're playing yeah. the same opponents. I would agree. What I'll do is I'll show you the map and some of how things like movement and combat work uh, and, the, and the command system, and then we'll wrap up with some final thoughts. So here's a look at at least some of the map. Okay, It's a very small portion of the first map. This is a two-mapper, and uh, it's a wonderful production value. I really like how the counters in the map look. Um, the biggest, and I'll, I'll show you here, the biggest part of this game that is really new, to me at least, is um, is your kind of command display. And on here, you will have a series of counters that represent all of your various different HQs. And your HQs are purely used to dictate when units activate. Um, and you have the US ones organized here, and the Allied ones uh, the, the British Commonwealth ones um, over here, and you have a little track that marks your activation points. So let's have a quick look at the horrible mess that is my German one. He says, I've totally messed this all up, but we'll, we'll get it going here. Okay. So what you have here is you have these core-sized uh, HQs that have a little red stripe on them, and then I have some subordinate division-sized HQs, uh, and those are, uh, those are arranged into these little rows in the 10th Army. So the more units that you get in, you, I can add one more row, and after that, I start having to put more divisions under the uh, 14th Panzer Corps, for example. Um, when you activate these units, you can see they're all on their activated side, you have to spend your activation points in the planning phase to do that. And I will put this down without messing everything up, hopefully. On this menu, 
it tells you how much those things are going to cost. So to activate a single division costs one point. If I want to activate a whole core and its subordinate divisions, it's n divisions plus one. So I'm going to activate the 76 Panzer Corps. I activate that plus two divisions. That costs me one, two, three points. Now, if I do that, I also get a bonus. I activate the core artillery unit. So I've got my 76 Panzer uh, core. Like, this is core level artillery that's really powerful and got good range on it. Uh, I also get to activate four independent units, uh, which there aren't a ton of those in the game, but there's like some lone uh, pioneers um, and different bits and pieces that you can kind of tag along with them. And you in including army artillery plus divisional bonus. So you go back to your divisional bonus, you can activate an independent unit, and also you can activate uh, core artillery as well. So y you're spending those points, and I've activated all of these units, and it cost me, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if, if, if I had 20 points, I've spent seven of them, so I've got 13 points left. Then, and, and the Allied player is going to do the same thing. What we're going to do then is we're going to go back and forth activating, like doing operations with our activated units. So let's say I want to activate this whole core together. Basically, I'm going to flip all these over. And then all of the corresponding units in these two divisions in the core, I literally move them on the board, and then I fight with them as I would in kind of a regular war game. Then it flips over to the allied turn, like the allied initiative, and we look at their little display, which doesn't have any HQs on it because we move them all off, but they're going to choose one of their divisions or, you know, a whole core to activate. They might have, for example, the 82nd Airborne, they activated just on their own. So I activated tons of units with my full core, they activated one division. Then it flips back to me as a Germans, I'm going to activate a whole other core and do a whole bunch of other stuff. Then it comes back to them and the British might activate 10 core and do a whole bunch of stuff. Then it comes back to me, well, I don't have anyone left to activate. Goes back to the British, they've got to activate the uh, first airborne parachute division. Uh, they're over here off map. <laughs> and then they might finish up doing all of their activations. So then we still have activation points left to spend. I couldn't spend any more because I didn't have anyone left to activate, right? It go basically, that was the end of an impulse. We start a whole new impulse with a new planning phase where I once again can pay points to activate units again. And once you start getting into important things you need to do strategically on the map or units that are in desperate need of uh, being rescued because uh, they maybe have their supply cut off, you know, you're activating different units again and again, trying to get more impulses with them, uh, rather than doing everyone once, and then everyone once again, you might be like, I'm going to activate this guy, and then I'm going to wait another impulse and activate them again. So the, the activation system is really, really, really neat, uh, and is the, they're really the heart and the driving force of this game. When you activate units, you'll notice units only have two factors. They have uh, a combat factor on the left, and a movement factor on the right. Um, so the combat is odds-based combat on a CRT, and movement is spending movement points across terrain. Those things we're very, very familiar with. Now the, uh, let me find the play age chart, which is here, here we go. Uh, the CRT is very much what you would expect. You have odds-based combat, a 2d6 die result, and you cross-reference, and that gives you attacker loses X number of steps, Defender loses X number of steps and retreats, or um, an exchange with A1-D1, or you might have to put an ops end counter on them, which basically means they can't do anything else for the rest of the impulse. Even if they advance after combat, they can't do breakthrough combat, for example. Um, the other really neat aspect of this game is you have all of these artillery pieces, uh, you have air force units, and you've, you've got naval bombardments. A lot of those things can be used out of turn, uh, to do barrages or bombardments, depending on which part of the rules you're looking at. Uh, if you look at the barrage table, this is what you're looking at. Basically, uh, if I've got this, like, this naval bombardment here, and I link it up with some cannons, I add up how many fire points I've got, roll 2d6, and then I look at the result. I'm going to hit a lot of the time, 
But if it's one of these green hits, then uh, the defender, or whoever's being bombarded, gets to choose either to lose a, a step or to put an end ops marker on themselves, which means they basically stop dead on their tracks and can't do anything else. If it's a red result, I as the bombarding player get to choose, hey, you have to lose a step or you have to do ops end. And the ops end stuff is really, really powerful because it basically stops you dead in your tracks. There's a bunch of these little markers that you're gonna put on. So if I'm just strolling along, trying to get my guys into combat, uh, this guy's got a range of three, does a big bombardment on me whilst I'm moving, and he scores an ops end, these guys are absolutely hosed and can't do anything else. And you're like, oh my gosh, you just get stopped dead in your tracks. So you then can't even go and do a combat, which it, it get, there's, a, there's a lot of that back and forth, and I really like games that make use of good artillery and naval fire and air attacks like that. It's not massively complex, it doesn't add a ton. Uh, each of the units has the yellow hexes, tells you the range, and the firepower as a number. And it, it's really simple in that way, but it's all that's a mechanic I really like in a lot of different games. Um, the other thing that we'll talk about real quick, we've kind of gone through how the command works and all your activation points are based on a little schedule here, um, is things like doing airdrops. And we've talked about that, but the chrome in this game is really, really simple. I just want to show you in the rules how simple it is. Because I was, this one really kind of blew my mind a little bit. Just about how easy some of this stuff is. To do an airborne assault, it's basically these three paragraphs only, a lot of which is, this is reiterates what's up here, and then there's a whole sentence that needs to be deleted here where they, they duplicated a sentence basically with an old rule. But like, airborne assaults, it's really simple. You have your guys off map, you drop them on the map, hopefully in open terrain, and then there's a little chart just, just up here. Let me see if I can't push this down so you can see it. There's a little, there's a drift chart uh, and there's a drift number of hexes. And you do that for each one that drops and they spread out and then they have half movement to move after you drop them. It, that's if they're coming from off map. If they're coming from on map, you just, you, you gotta start on or adjacent to an airport. And there's like one around here somewhere, I can't remember where it is. If not, you, you can go capture one over here in the west. But it's, the rules are so, like that's such a simple set of rules for something that in other games has like a full half page of rules or a page of rules and you're just like, this is too much. I wanna just do a cool airborne drop. You just do it in this game. I, I, I felt a, a sense of freedom in that that I hadn't in, in other games. There's so much, uh, there's so, so many other things in this game uh, to do with how a, how many aircraft you can get based on airports that you've captured, you know, air bases that you can land uh, your different air forces in, and uh, and and uh, fighting rear guard actions, doing counter attacks. You can't inspect other people's stacks unless you're an allied player, and you invest in your uh, intelligence strategies where you can inspect other stacks. I, I mean. There's so much to like in this, but the freedom that you get from being able to move and activate and move and activate, I felt like, whilst the turns were very long, and this can be a long game, it gives you time to do a whole bunch of stuff that in other games was, I felt, such a time crunch. Here, you, you've got the opportunity to do a lot more um, at, a, at a pace which is maybe a bit more reasonable. So again, this is just some of the game. Uh, what we'll do is we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. Uh, so that was a look at the map, um, and at least some of how, how the mechanics work. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's, it's, again, 14 pages of rules, but those 14 pages translate into a lot of things that happen and do, and there's a good number yeah. of moving parts, especially with the how the turn structures work and your activation points. Yeah. But... I enjoyed, I don't know, it, it was a little bit scary with how much freedom I had. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, you know, other games where there's a much more rigid structure, it's like, all right, my turn, I'm going to move all my units. Yeah, right. right. This one, it's my first impulse, I'm going to move all I'm my gonna units. I'm going to do this, yeah. My second impulse, uh, I'm probably going to move all my units. Third mm -hmm. impulse, uh, okay. Yeah. Now I'm only going to move these units 
Because I'm running out of points. So that I can move them again next impulse, yeah. maybe, depending on how things go. Mm -hmm. So, and it's like, okay, I called in air support for the first impulse. Do I want to bother doing that again? Because mm -hmm. it was ineffective. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. There, there's, there's, a, there's a lot to think about and consider just from, you know, the planning phase. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so many, so many planning phases in games. It's either you're doing like your little secret planning, or it's like pretty arbitrary decisions, or ones which right. are like binary. It's like you know this, this or one, that. This one, I feel like you. Th there's more to it. Yeah, and uh, you can get into some. You know, and then in the, as the games go on, you've got tons of units out. Your activation pool starts to feel real small, mm. <laughs> and 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 you get into that whole. I can't quite do as much as I maybe want to. Yeah. Which is always something I enjoy in games. Yeah. It's ver it gives you interesting and meaningful tactical yeah. decisions. But I think along that same line, I think as I said earlier, I think your decisions even become more meaningful because you can change them midstream and you're not necessarily dedicated 100% to doing yeah. it that way. There is some give and take. There is some ability to switch not totally. You still activated those units, but you can switch how you activate them or where you move them or what you do. I I don't know. There's just a lot of cool things. Now, I would say one thing. This is a historical simulation. Mm -hmm. The roads, the mountains, the geography, the terrain, the goals and objectives are the same historically. I'm not going to mess over here on this side of the map. You know what I'm saying? As the allies, it's like, I'm running up here and I'm running here. And... Right. So it, it, it limits those choices, because you mentioned that comment of, well, I can do anything. Well, yeah, but they're still strategic Yeah, how you, choices. How you conduct the campaign is up to you, but right. the, especially in the scenarios, you're guided towards doing what was historically Doing done. certain things, because that's right. how you win the game. Yeah. So, I, uh, yeah, I really like this. There is a lot of meat on this bone. These yes. are very, this is a very meaty, very yes. fulfilling war game. I enjoyed this. We supped on it. I'm gonna be honest. We didn't. No, we yeah. didn't dive in and play 25 hours. But I really enjoyed what we what we did taste. And I'm gonna be honest. This is a game I would love to get back to the table. Yeah. Particularly because we understand it now. I think it's yes. gonna go quicker. Yes, very much so. Thirdly, though, I think tactically, there's a lot of elements that I missed or didn't understand. Now I do. And I'm like, oh, we could have done this, and it would have caused a little more intrigue and tension. I, I don't know. This is a good one. I'm gonna be honest. This yeah. is a good. This is a good game. Yeah. Nice job, Sergio. I I think it's very, very good. Yeah. The only the the only real downside the rules is the rules and it, and downside is I hate to use that term because it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Uh, again, I've read rule books which are unplayable. Right. Yeah. I mean, we there was a game. I'm not gonna mention it. Earlier this year, after COVID opened up. We got that game out, and it was kind of a, a folio game. We moved four or five units on the board. We saw a, a very bad rules issue and a setup issue, and I was like, boop, we're done. And then we played another game. Yes. We only gave that one ten minutes. And I'm going to be honest, we knew immediately that it was a stinker. Yes. I'm not going to mention the name of that game. No, 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 yeah. But this game was exactly the opposite. The moment we got everything on the board and we started looking at everything and the planning, I was like, Ooh, this is gonna be cool. Yeah, you just there are a couple bits where you just got to learn it, and I'm yeah. gonna read the one part of the rules we talked about earlier, which was it was funny. It was yeah, it was it's funny. Airborne assault, right? It, yeah, it just says uh, units that end up in the sea, in the mountains, or above enemy units lose one step of force and automatically moves by two hexes. Next Pretty clear, right? Right. Next sentence. Units that end up in the sea, in the mountains, or above enemy units lose so one level of force and automatically move to the first permitted hex nearby. It's totally different. A completely different totally rule. Totally different. Obviously, that second sentence is, <laughs> is to a me, that's the rule that they put in. Yeah. They just needed to strike the first sentence. forgot to delete the, yeah. the first sentence. But, like, yeah. there are a couple of little bits and pieces like that where you're like, okay. They yeah. obviously intended it to be this way, or... They use a word, and it's clearly you can tell that it's a translation thing, not a rules yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And you just you got to work with what it should be doing. Yeah, that's all. And, and I think I want to make sure we are not making fun 
Oh, no. Uh, I, I can only imagine. We both speak another language. Yes. You speak German yes. fairly well. I get tired of hearing, you know, your immaculate <laughs> pronunciations of things. I speak Japanese, you know. Yeah. I, mine's you know older. I mean. I, I'm, I'm a little more removed from when I used it regularly. But, man, I know how hard it was to translate in those things. Oh, my gosh, yeah. And you can't change certain words. You So I know... From Italian to this, there's just, it's and, difficult. Yeah, and it's not like, oh, this is some poem where we have some artistic license, yeah. right? This is It's a, it's a war game. You it's have to be, gotta be this. very strict and yeah. explicit about certain things. And there's a couple times where a mm -hmm. word was changed to something else when it should have been changed to the word that was used earlier in the rule book and that wasn't cross-referenced, right. that's all. Yeah. And and so you just kind of, you got to work with that and understand that that's, Something that is a feature of these rules, yep. but it does not render them unplayable in any way. No. Uh, and it doesn't detract from the enjoyment of the game. Yeah. It just you, you said it best, you might have to work a little harder. Yeah, you just got to you, yeah. use your brain. This one will reveal itself. I've used yep. my brain with some other games, and it didn't I reveal want itself. To just die. It was so yep. bad. Yes. So. Not a, I couldn't write a rule book, and nor could I translate a rule book. I would not I, nearly attempt to. So kudos to them for having done this, because this game has a lot of potential. It and does. And I think if this is something that you want to invest in, and you have the time to do so, and the space and inclination for a, a big Italian campaign that is something different, mm -hmm. uh, mechanically speaking, this might be something yeah. to check out. I, I, I think of fresh. I, I feel like this is in, it's fresh. Yeah. Is it's the feeling I got. It's involved. Yep. Uh, is a word that I would so use. So it's very similar to many war games we play. It's involved. Yes, this but is But their this is take involved. on a lot of different things is, is fresh. Or it feels fresh, yeah. at least. And whilst it's intricate, it's not complex. No. Overly complex, at least. Yeah, yeah, the mechanics are really pretty simple. It's just the intricacies of yeah. understanding the, how to the, use them. The way they layer the options that you have mm. is very good. Yeah. That's something that I very much appreciate in the design philosophy that they've gone with this. Yeah. So that's a big thumbs up from me from that standpoint as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. And and it looks great on the table. It's this so is nice to play with. Beautiful game. I, I thought the counters were really simple but clear and, and good. The map's gorgeous. The box is good. I mean, it's good. It's a good production. Yes, it yes, really it is. is. Nice job. So, this is from Solano to Rome from Dissimula Edizioni. Uh, where can people get this? You know, I... Is it from their website direct, basically? Yeah, but I do know that there was an importer, Jack Green, I think. Um, okay. I can't remember. Quarter Deck International? Is it Quartermaster General? No. Okay. Quarter Deck International. Okay. Quartermaster General is like a series. A game? Yeah, it's like a, it's a game. But I think Quarter Deck International either distributed this in the U.S. Okay. They may have copies. I, I guess I should have checked that. Yeah, it's some of the some. Of, this is it's like the number one comment we get, and when we have when yeah, we do where do I get the Europe, game? Like, yeah. how can I get it? I'm like, go on their website. They yeah. get some pain uh, euros. I will say this: I bet they probably sold out by now. I mean, it's been it's been out for six months. Does the, do they not get them back in? I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I should have checked. It's, I should have checked. Yeah. But like, you know, if it's something you you think might be up your alley yeah. for, for a bit more of a hefty war game, I would... Go, I would go for it. Check this out, at least. Yeah. You won't be disappointed. No. So, Solano to Rome. Check this out. Appreciate you guys tuning in. I've been Alexander from ThePlayersAid.com. And I'm Grant.